What up, everybody? It's your girl July from Kickback Couture. And today, I'm gonna go over some sampling tools that you can use. Now, let's say you got your sample. All right, now what do I do with it? Or you got it chopped and you're like, okay, how do I mix it? How do I make it fit in with everything else? So that's what we're gonna talk about. Let's get straight into it. First things first, Tracklib, Sauce. It's like a sample store, a record store for samples. That's what they called it at least. But it's really dope. There's rare samples on it and there's some not so rare samples on it. Basically, what you can do is dig for your samples on here. And whenever you need to release your song, you get ready to release it, it's easy to get it cleared. And they tell you exactly how much it's gonna be to clear it. So just as a, a prede predecessor, whatever. It's before I start and show you these beats, these are the samples I used. Gotta Wake Up by Fenton Robertson, Robinson, and it's license C. So what that means is there's three types of licenses, category A, category B, and category C. So it's gonna cost me $50 to get this sample cleared on this song, right? And then down here, this is how much revenue, um, this is what the split will be. So category C, it means I'll be giving, and I use less than, between 15 and 60 seconds, I think. So I'll be giving 10 to 20% um, of my revenue share away to whoever owns the sample, right? And then the other one I use is called, I'll show you the way by Norman Fills, and it's category B. So this one will cost me 500 to clear. So be sure you check and see how much these licenses are because you might mess up and get a sample that's gonna cost you a ridiculous amount and regret it later. But 500 to clear the sample, which is cool, that's doable. And then uh, used, shoot, I think I used less than 15 seconds. Since it's a category B, I'll be giving them 15% of my revenue share. All right, so that is how you use Tracklib. You just go through, find what you want. They have different collections from different producers. Shout out to Sarah. Sarah is dope. Y'all know who Sarah is? Y'all missing out. Um, you got some inspired collections as well. Let's click on collections. I'll show you real quick. Sarah. Just Blaze. Domingo. J, J Live, Rhino, Calvin Valentine. There's some dope people and you can go through their stuff or you can go and create your own libraries so you can sample them later. Create that archive. All right. Now, what I used to chop my samples was Serato Sample. If you're not up on Serato Sample, I don't know where you have been in this world. Where are you at? You got to catch up. Serato Sample, ill as heck. Okay. So these are all the chops you get. I believe there's up to 32 chops now. It used to be 16, but now they doubled it. So this is my sample without any effects on it. Uh, well, these are my chops at least. Oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, uh, so I went through this song basically and I found a spot that I liked and I just started adding my chops and to add your chops you just find where you want to go and you either click on a button or you press a key on your keyboard I don't know how your setup is set up but that's how you do it and then you can just trigger it just like that so I'm going to delete that because I don't want to keep that now in order to process this sample, let me show you what I did. Tool number two is Peel. Peel is a dope EQ that you can use to isolate specific instruments within your sample. So in this case, I'm isolating the brass and the vocals, cutting out some of the hi-hat frequencies, cutting out the bass frequencies, and a little bit of brass off the sides, just, just to make it fit in well with the rest of the beat. So let me play what I have so far. First things first, if you are going to use Peel in FL Studio, you have to do this. Click on this icon right here, the plug with the cogwheel, and then 
you'll see these two output lights. One of them needs to be turned off. If you don't turn one of them off, the sound will cancel itself out and you won't hear anything. The second thing, there are colors here that you can select. If you do not select a color, you won't see anything. So you need to select a color in order for the visual part appeal to work. And this will show you exactly what you're hearing. Now this white box is highlighting the area that I am isolating. If I want the inverse, I'll click on this little white square here and you'll see it flip. And that is the sound that we're cutting out of the sample. So I'm actually gonna show you how to isolate frequencies yourself. If you get this plugin and try it out, you'll know what to do. I chose the color purple. So wherever you see purple populate, that is where the most frequencies are being picked up. So we got some bass here. And not much going on here, which is why we don't see much color. You can see the vocal populating in this area right here. As we extend to the right and a bit to the left, we'll get more of that brass. Now that I like where this sample is at and what I've isolated, I'm going to use RC20 to add some space, wobble, and distortion. Beautiful. Now the old school way of doing this is just to grab an EQ and you'll see how kind of inefficient that is. All right, and let's just pull this down. This is what y'all often do. It's not as clear as using peel. We're cutting way more than we want to cut at this point, even if we change the cue. Still nowhere near as clean as Peel, so I suggest you grab Peel. It is super affordable. In fact, I believe it's on sale at Plugin Boutique right now, so grab that. You need this in your toolkit if you love sampling like I do. clean and it doesn't take away the integrity of the sample. Let's delete this. The next thing I would add is drum extract. Drum extract gets rid of the drums in the sample. Now, you may have heard of unmixed drums before. Unmixed drums is like $200. Drum extract is a fraction of that price. Drum extract is like 49 euros. So if we run this through Serato and there's no peel, nothing, all we're gonna do is add drum extract. I opened up a separate session so that I could show you all this. You can see that you can get a percussive mix to the original two harmonics. So percussive, percussive will take out the, the instrumental elements of it. So let's hit play. I gotta go, I gotta go now. To original. My sweet baby's face. Harmonic. Oh, I wanna know. I just got to know. Now, in my project, I had it at about this point. I didn't want it to be so non percussive that it kind of made the audio duck so much. As you can see when you listen here, you can hear the audio, the volume, and the sample ducking every time a drum hits. So to combat that, I turned it down just a little bit. Then when we layer that with something like peel, 
we get a clean sample. All right, let's jump into my Ableton Live project for the next beat. Dope. So this is my Ableton Live project. I called it one again, whatever. Um, this is the sample I use for this. I'm just going to solo it for now so y'all can hear this exclusively, and I'll show you the effects I have on it. So on this sample specifically, I use peel. Peel is coming right after. So if I turn everything off, I'll just group these real quick. Command G, turn off the group. So peel did a really good job of getting those bass frequencies out. I wanted to keep the percussive sounds in there. So in this exact situation I did not use drum extract because I wanted to keep in those percussion whoops those percussion transients cool so the next thing I added here is a compressor and the compressor is basically taking the input from the kick so I'm side chaining the sample the kick to the sample, however you want to say it. Uh, that is what's happening here with this compressor. And then over here, I got an EQ. I'm just raising some of the high frequencies. And then I got Dr. MS. This is my favorite plugin for putting things in different spaces in the mix, aside from panning itself. This is just super dope. Without Dr. MS, and with it. It just spread it out some more. So hopefully you have headphones or some good studio monitors so you can hear the quality of that. I'll play this beat in the outro, but before I get to that, I just wanted to recap everything. So tools that you have to know about as a producer, track lib, peel, and drum extract. If you don't know about those tools, I suggest you check them out. There are trials for everything. Track lib, once you sign up, you get seven free samples to start. And then drum extract is 49 euros. And the last time I checked, Peel was on sale for $32 on Plugin Boutique. So I'll have all the links in the description for you. Let's hit that outro. It's all culture, kickback, cook up. Let me know what you would like to see next if you want any more videos on sampling or anything like that. It's all culture, kickback, and cook up. Yeah, let's get it. Can I fucking